Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 1 p.m. Eastern on Friday, December the 7th. U.S. job growth slowed in November and monthly wages increased less than expected, suggesting some moderation in economic activity that could support expectations of fewer interest rate increases from the Federal Reserve in 2019. And of course, that could be good news for the market. Let's go on and look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. Today, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. As you all know, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 benchmark index. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $265.23 or about 26.52 on the S&P 500 itself. Today continues the volatility that we have seen since it hit an all-time closing high up here that was established on September 20th at 23 at, I'm sorry at $293.58 or about 29.35 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, since then, of course, we know that it dropped dramatically down to its October 29th lows at about 260. But ever since it made this pivot right here on at $281.15 on October 17th, it has been trading in a range, pretty, pretty, pretty clear range here, as you can see. <clears throat> because it fell to about, again, about 260 on October 29th, and then started rolling higher, coming down lower, ro moving higher, rolling down lower. So lots of peaks and valleys here. And so we've established this range of about 281, or we could call it 2800 on the S&P to round it off, at the highs and down to about 262, 263, uh, for the lows here. So we've been trading in this up and down volatile move, not kind of knowing which way to go. And today, again, when I captured this chart, the SPY was down on the day, trading at 265.23. Now, at current time, we're seeing the 50 and 200 day moving averages uh, form a death cross. It actually formed yesterday. When the 50-day moving average moves below, and the green line here is the 50-day, the black line is the 200-day. When the 50-day moving average moves below the 200-day moving average in trading, we call that a death cross. Now, while that's an <laughs> extremely negative term, it does not always mean that the asset you're looking at is going to dive uh, incredibly lower and all will be lost. It doesn't always mean that. But it's, it's because of the price action we've had, especially in the last two and a half months. Of course, it markets down from its highs. S&P has come down. 50-day moving average, of course, moves more quickly than the 200-day. And it has crossed down, making this death cross. You'll, you may hear this over and over again from other analysts. Please do not take it as a, 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 prognostica a prognosticator of more downside to come for sure. It does indicate current weakness in the market, that's for sure, but it doesn't necessarily indicate the end of the world is coming. Now, to rescue it from its current doldrums, the SPY needs to hold here for sure at one at 260. For sure at 260. Actually, 262, 263 would be better if that can happen in the coming week. And buyers need to jump in and take it back up above the 200-day line, which is coming in at 275.92. We can call it 276 if we want. Even better, even better is if we could take it back up in the month of December, back up over this 280 resistance line. That would be uh, certainly at one point, if it could trade over that, close over it for, say, three days in a row, that would give us certainly motivation to exhale at least a little bit. Still, with the volatility continuing, I will be cautious heading into next week. 
If I do see a great opportunity, I will follow my usual strategy of entering only with small positions and firm stops. We'll have to stay tuned to see if the market can get a little jollier and perhaps even experience a Santa rally. That would be nice as we head into the holiday season. Our next chart here is a daily chart of the Invesco QQQ. This, as you know, is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows the NASDAQ 100 index, a very important index in the stock market. <clears throat> as you know, this is where all the FANG stocks live. And it is the NASDAQ 100 is the, uh, t represents the top 100 non-financial stocks in the U.S. stock market. We keep a close eye on it in Tony's Market Club. Now, since the, the QQQ made an all-time closing high on August 29th at $186.74, it has whipsawed itself. It made this double top here. And then, as you can see by this chart, it has just whipsawed, actually trading in a very wide range downtrend here, lower lows, lower highs for sure, um, all the way into, again, today's price action. It's off its highs today. When I captured it today, it was trading at $162.59. It's off this all-time high by about 12%. And again, trading right now at $162.59. Now, Apple is responsible for part of this fall. Apple is off its October 3rd high of $233.47 by nearly 27% today. So that's, that's, that's big news, and it's certainly taking the cues lower. Other FANG stocks have also taken a beat, beating lately, and that has also pulled this index down. Now, I'm going to show you what could be a positive pattern if it plays out, but at the moment it doesn't look extremely promising. This kind of pattern here can be a promising pattern if and only if this support low here holds at 162. Now we can say 162 is important support if we draw that line all the way across. If, if, if the Qs could manage to rally here off of say 162, maybe even 161.50, and then start back up again, that could turn into, but the operating, the, the, uh, the important word here is could, that could turn into a very nice rally. At the moment, however, the, the uh, semiconductors are moving lower, the QQQ is moving lower, so we'll have to see if it can hold this low at 162 uh, today and into next week. Uh, if not, our next support low here is at 157. That's very important. Should the Qs break 157, then we definitely need to get even more, more conservative, I'm going to say, and more defensive with our positions. Still and all, we could see a Santa rally toward the end of this month, so stay mentally nimble so you can take advantage of new opportunities when they appear, because they will appear. Our final chart today, our chart, third chart, is going to be of the Utilities Select Sector Spider Fund, the XLU. Now, the XLU has 29 holdings. Uh, some of those top holdings include Nextera Energy, Duke, Dominion, Southern Company, and Exelon. And by the way, I recommended Dominion, symbol D, in Tony's Market Club a couple of three weeks ago. And it has remained strong in a generally down market. So utilities have remained strong in a generally down market. Now, when I captured this chart today, the XLU was trading up here at $56.73. Look at the difference in this chart. If you remember the chart of the SPY and certainly the chart of the QQQ, look at the chart of the XLU, the Utility Select Sector Spider Fund, Look at the difference in this chart. This is a truly defensive sector. Now, it did come down here in June, made a low of $48.37 on June 6th, then walked up a trend ever since, moved up above the 20-day, the red line, 
50-day, the green line, and then started moving higher, came down and made a low around 51.50 uh, toward the end of September, but then rallied back up and has been moving in an uptrend ever since. This is defying constant announcements that the Fed officials have been making, saying they were going to raise interest rates, but evidently utilities didn't agree with them. Now, utilities broke out in the last week in a down market. Again, it's a very defensive sector, and it, it may, may, may be able to run higher. My preference as a trader would be that it, the XLU drops back in the next week toward 55.50, somewhere around there, 55.50, 56. As a trader, this would be my preference, and then rallies from there, not all the way down, but rallies from there. But as we all know, stock prices rarely heed our wishes. If the XLU stays above the red line, the 20-day moving average, which is coming in at 55, if it stays above, above that into the coming week and, and stays in this range from 55 to, say, where it is now up to 50, uh, 56, 70, right around here, I may add shares of the XLU to my portfolio with an initial stop as a close below the 50-day moving average, which is coming in right now at $54.20. Uh, so I will do that, and then, of course, turn my stop into a trailing stop if the XLU continues higher. So you may want to keep an eye on the XLU in the coming week and see if it does ever provide an opportunity. And now on to next week economic reports, but first... Please join us this Monday, December 10th, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. If you're not quite sure how to approach the market right now, let us help. We will talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members just a few minutes after the session ends. For more information and to join, go to tonysmarketclub.com. And now for the coming week's economic reports, we're going to have enough things to talk about next week with all that's going on without economic reports on top of it, but we do have a few. On Tuesday, we have the producer price index. Wednesday, we have the consumer price index and crude inventories. On Thursday, we have our usual jobless claims and our usual natural gas inventories. And on Friday, we have retail sales. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this terrific opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Until next week, Keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.